The huge accident was seeming impossible to get to. Because of it, it blocked two lines. Father, said Henry, no one could even get to you guys. That's what I thought, said Ryan. Literally, no engine could get to their line to help their engines. The only chance they would have, they would have is from Samson's line, but his line was even tight. Uh, said Samson, I don't think I can actually get through here. Just then disaster struck. His cars were coming off the rails. Oh no, oh no, said Samson, he couldn't do anything. Ah! He then flew off the rails too. Ah! Ah! That track was no good. Father, why do they put useless tracks on our railway, said Henry. You can't control the tracks, said Trevor. The track probably just got old and warped over time. You know I know how it goes. Yes, Trevor, said Henry, I know how it goes, but seriously. Luckily, Whiff had gotten picked up, and the top of the hat and Whiff were still trying to figure out a plan. I mean, how can we even get to them, said Whiff. I don't know, Whiff, said Stop and Hat. I mean, our closest line would be Henry, but, like, that is a bit close, said Whiff. I get it, but, I mean, no, so it would be too far, I mean. And that's the main line, so we, one of the main lines, so we can't block it. I know, sir, said Whiff. They were still trying to figure out what to do. Does anyone here have any ideas? I have no idea, said some of the other engines that were sitting at the turntable. Those engines were Timothy, James, and Edward. We have no idea. Me neither, said Philip, who came up. I have no idea either. Well, engine, said Trot and Hat. We have fi might just have to wait. I might just have to cancel all the trains to get them to um, get picked up. No, sir, you can't do that, said Whiff. Then we'll lose passengers on our railway. Well, Whiff, it's been a day and I still don't know what to do. I'm going crazy not having that stuff. And and I knew... Ugh, said Tom Hat. He gave up in his thoughts. Ugh. You know what? It was my fault. I should not put those engines together. Sir, said Whiff, don't think like that. It's true, said Tom Hat. If I didn't have put Diesel, Bill, and Ben, they wouldn't have tried to plot together. But I think Spencer was plotting with them, said James. I mean, he was magically getting stuck. Yeah, said Philip. I could see him from Natwood Station. He just magically got stuck on there and asked engines to pull him. So then when they got enough speed, that was his chance to push them over, and that's what he did. Oh, engines, said Tom. I just don't know what we can do from this point. I mean, I'm trying to think of every option, but I just can't think of anything. I don't know, said the engines. All the engines were lost in their thoughts. Meanwhile, engines like Gordon and Thomas were busy doing their work, so they didn't have much time to think about it. Hey, Gordon, said Thomas. Did you know that? But Gordon was off. No time to talk, little Thomas, he said. Oh, thought Thomas. After all these years, he still calls me little Thomas. I'm not little. I am a big engine, he said. Just then Rosie and Paxton came down. Hello, Thomas, said Rosie. So, did you hear about the accident? Oh my gosh, who hasn't by now, said Thomas, and they were talking. Yeah, it's a horrible one. I mean, we can't. no one can get over to that line properly to help them. And it, and it just feels like the accident that was created is getting more bigger. I know, said Thomas. I don't know what we can do. Um, they tried to think. Um, do you have any suggestions? No, I thought you had suggestions. Rosie, well, I don't have any suggestions, said Thomas. I've been busy doing my work the past few days. Me too, said Rosie. They seriously were stumped on how they could rescue them. If only, thought Billy from the back of the train, if Cranky could move over there and pick all that up. Right, Cranky? Ha ha ha, said Billy. Uh... Yeah, why would I want to go p over there and pick up engines? They are heavy. Excuse me, said Thomas. Sorry, I'm just being realistic. Um, said Rosie, that's kind of rude, you know, Cranky. Yeah, Cranky, said Billy. Okay, I'm sorry, engines, I'm sorry. I, um, I don't look, I don't watch my mouth sometimes. Yeah, you need to watch it sometimes, said Thomas. Yeah, said Rosie. And Billy. 
Well, you guys better get on your way instead of talking about this, because there's nothing we can do at this point. Fine, said Wolsey. You go first, Thomas. Thank you, said Wolsey, and Thomas was off. But meanwhile, there was more trouble just about this fight. Gordon could not see with from over the hill. When he did, it was too late. Get out of the way, he said to Whiff. Ah! And they crashed. Ah! said Whiff. Tom Hat, meanwhile, got knocked out from the wind. Ugh! And he laid in a field. Ah! said Whiff and Gordon. It was a disaster. Luckily for Gordon and Whiff, the breakdown train was right there. But unfortunately, after a few minutes, there was no words from the top of hat. He was still laying in the field. Um, said Whiff. Is the top of hat okay? I don't know. Just then, Whiff's driver got out of his cab. Ugh, he said, I gotta make sure. Whiff's driver walked over to the top of hat. Sir? Sir top of hat? Sir? He was tapping him. Sir top of hat? Are you there? There was no response. Oh no, said the the driver. He flipped over to Topham Hat. He was unconscious. So Topham Hat, are you okay? He said. So Topham Hat did not respond. Um, okay. Um, this is bad. He got hit pretty bad by that train that came down, Gordon, said Edward. Hey, this is not my fault. Uh, it kind of is, Gordon, said with. Guys! It would now be a race against the clock to try to save Sir Topham Hat. The end.